Hello and welcome to the training on how to never worry about what to eat at weekends, parties or dinners out ever again. Now, when we're on a diet, we want to look our best, we want to eat the best food that we can. 10 times out of 10, I'll get asked the question, so what do I do if, and then insert the phrase, I have a dinner out, it's my friend's birthday, I've got a stag do, a hen do, a work conference, a weekend getaway, a holiday, anything at all that people perceive to ruin their progress. Now, this is a common question for good reason. How do we navigate this? Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what I would do if I was in control of navigating these environments, these sort of events, um, if they were coming up on the weekend. So today, I'm just gonna talk about what to do for a two to three, uh, sorry, a one to two day occurrence where you're, you're gonna be eating in a surplus. Typically speaking, we've got a calorie intake of 2000 calories per day, protein intake of 150 grams a day. Okay, they're the numbers that I'm gonna use for this example, so you can follow along with me, but you can, you can do this for whatever calorie and protein allowance that you have set yourself. The first point is that you need to start thinking about your calories on a weekly basis. The weekly calorie intake of 2000 per day equates to 14,000 calories for the week. Your protein content rarely changes because it's equated to the muscle mass, the lean muscle tissue that you have on your body. Your muscle tissue doesn't drop quickly like fat, it's, it's there to stay. It builds slowly, but it drops slowly. Fat, you can drop five to 10 pounds in a five to seven day period if you want to very, very quickly. And so your calories that feed, aka feed your fat sources can change just as quick. Okay, that's why protein stays relatively consistent. The first way that you can approach this is as it would be planned, balanced. Okay, this is where you have a Monday to Sunday um, intake of food. As you can see at the bottom there, every single day of the week, you will have a 250 calorie deficit, right? You'll have these little deficits split evenly throughout the week in order to get you to your calorie intake. Let's just say, for example, your maintenance calories was 2,250. If you had a 250 calorie deficit, that would then mean that you're eating 2,000 calories per day, which would put you in a fairly substantial deficit and you would absolutely lose weight with this intake, okay? A 250 calorie a day deficit ends up being a weekly deficit of 1,750 calories, okay? So that's it. On paper, that's the perfect diet. However, it's not that simple and that's why this training exists. The good thing about eating like this, let's just first cover the pros and cons. You have the same meals every day, which means you can completely remove any preparation or any thought of cooking and behavior and all that stuff out of your mind. You know that you're gonna wake up, you're gonna have the same breakfast, the same lunch and the same dinner every day of the week. That means you can think on, you can think about other things, okay? So the complexity disappears. There's no tracking involved. Obviously, if you're having the same foods each and every day, the ability or the necessity for you to track calories and monitor your intake disappears because you know exactly what you're having on a daily basis, which can be enticing for some people. And then you rotate your meals every two to four weeks. You replace the ones that you're getting bored of and you keep the ones that you don't mind. And all in all, this is the most simplistic approach to weight loss. However, the bad things, obviously, slightly robotic, right? It's monotonous, it's repetitive, it's all those things. It's kind of unrealistic to imagine that someone would eat this way for a prolonged period of time. It's definitely not allowing for change. And not only this, but also it doesn't promote any long-term healthy, sustainable behavior change that you know how to navigate these um, circumstances in the future, right? If someone's diet phase was just 12 weeks of saying no to everything social, locking themselves in their house, having the same meals every single day, and then looking 20 pounds lighter at the end of a, of a transformation period, then, like, yeah, you get the result, but it's not, it's arguably not worth it, right? People want to have the body to go on holiday, feel confident, look amazing, but also the mindset, the ability to navigate those uh, social territories so they can go out, have fun, look amazing at a party, look amazing on the beach, look amazing at a club. Whatever it is that you're using for your motivation, it's typically not associated with literally just the weight loss. There's almost always a reason for uh, doing these things, looking and feeling a certain way should manifest itself in your life 
so you can do the things that you want to do better, you, you know, not just sit inside. So there are a few reasons why an approach like this would work, but there's also a whole laundry list of reasons why an approach like this is difficult. And so you are essentially left with option number two, which I call the social eating option. All right, this is the one that we're gonna go through today right now. So we have the same Monday to Sunday um, window. You have your same calorie maintenance, 2,250. You have your same target calories that would put you in that nice deficit that we want, 2,000 calories, okay? You can see I've got my 250 calorie deficit every day, okay? It's all on track until we get to Friday, this one right here at the end of the week, and then we wanna go out, we wanna have a good time. So we're gonna eat a little bit more, 500 calories more than our diet on Saturday, and on Sunday, we go in big, right? We want a thousand calories extra for our diet. So we're gonna consume an extra 1,500 calories across the weekend. You can see that this yellow section in the middle brings us up to maintenance. So from our diet, obviously of 2,000, if we eat just 250 calories more, we're at maintenance level, which gets us into this yellow zone here. If we ate at maintenance, we wouldn't gain weight, but we also wouldn't lose it. Okay. And then you can see that these calories now are pushing us above and far above on the Sunday. Okay. So how do we navigate this? How do we factor in all of these good times with friends that we want to have and diet and look amazing at the same time? So number one, you can just take the loss. I say take the loss in brackets. What I really mean is maintain your weight. Okay. If you had five days at a 250 calorie deficit, you would achieve a 1,250 calorie deficit, okay? The two days that you were eating on the weekend, you have Saturday of 500 calories in a surplus, and you have Sunday at 1,000 calories in a surplus, that adds up to 1,500 calories. The 1,250 calorie deficit and the 1,500 calorie surplus, they level out and they give you the actual deficit, which is actually a surplus of 250 calories. So your week on average is 250 calories above your maintenance. 250 calories, honestly, is not a lot of calories. With a week like this, you would probably maintain your body weight on the scale, okay? So you wouldn't make progress, but you wouldn't lose it either. So you can, you, that is an option. If it's, a, if it's a big party, you don't wanna worry about tracking, you don't wanna diet down in the week, you just wanna do what you can Monday to Friday and then just let the weekend roll, that's honestly a plan that some people choose to go for in certain periods of time. Option two is you just split the calories that you will overconsume on the weekend and you distribute those throughout the week evenly. Okay, so I've called this split between Monday to Friday, which is a five day week, and achieve a slightly higher deficit or a slightly lower deficit, sorry. So your target deficit as before is 1,750, right? If we go back to our boring robotic balanced meal plan, we were achieving a calorie deficit of 1,750 for the week. So that's our target and that's still our target. Now, your 1,500 calorie surplus that you're eating over Saturday and Sunday right? You're going to divide that by five. That gets you 300 calories a day, right? Monday to Friday is a five day week. That means that you just need to eat 300 calories less on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you will achieve the deficit that you've essentially eaten over the weekend, okay? So your original deficit right here was originally 250 calories per day, all right? That got us down from our maintenance of 2250 to 2000. We're gonna add on the extra deficit that we've just calculated here, okay? So we're gonna add on the 300 on top of that, which creates a new 550 calorie deficit, okay? So if I just go back to the week here, you've got normal deficit all the way through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then this extra square that I'm adding is minus 300, 300, 300, 300 and 300 again, okay? All in all, that means that the total that we've now actually subtracted from each day is a total of 550 calories every single day. Every day for clarity, it's 550 calories, okay? Which means our diet that was originally 2,000, that will be a new intake of 1,700 for the day, okay? So 
In short, in summary, if you just take your one thousand, your two thousand calories that you were having Monday to Friday, all right, and you eat on the weekend the way that you wanted to, which is fifteen hundred calories extra. Number one, you just maintain your weight, all right. If you keep dieting in the week, number two, with the with the uh, method that we've just been through, instead of eating two thousand calories in the week, you're just going to eat one thousand seven hundred calories in the week every single day. That means you will actually create a deficit of 1,250, which isn't the 1,750 that we were aiming for, but it is still substantially more than the surplus that you're actually eating if you chose method one. So on method one, you maintain your weight, you possibly even gain it slowly over time. And on method two, you're still substantially losing weight every single week. You're still in a thousand plus calorie deficit every single week. That leaves us with one more option to cover, which is our option three, which gives us the 1,750 calorie deficit in a way that I think is quite sustainable. We've called it the go hard method, all right? Because this is not easy. Subtracting this amount of calories from your day to day is difficult. If we do the same that we did above, we We've hit an intake of 1,700. But as I mentioned, that's only got us to a deficit of 1,250. So we want our deficit to be 1,750. So in all, in all seriousness, it's only 500 calories extra that we need to lose. So in my opinion, rather than splitting just like 50 calories each every day, I would just do two big hits, 250 calories in one day, 250 calories on another day, okay? So we've got three days an intake of um, 1,700, and then we've got two days of an extra deficit, minus 250 of 1,450 calories, just for two days though, okay? So we're gonna go back to our table. Let's just say that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, this was minus 300, minus 300, minus 300, okay? This is our normal deficit that we did in option number two. However, for the Thursday and the Friday, we've got the minus 300 also, but we're gonna minus another 250 from that as well, because we want that extra deficit, okay? So we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are sort of like the the, the moderate calorie days here. We've got the when, the Thursday and the Friday being a very low calorie day here, all right? But then you're gonna reward yourself and you've got a high calorie day here on Saturday and then you've got the highest calorie day here on the Sunday, okay? Which is far beyond what you would be having in a diet, but you've made it work for you, okay? So if we take the intake of three days being 1,700 and two days being 1,450, per day, that means we get a new deficit of our target, which is 1,750 calorie deficit by just adding two extra days where we have 250 calories less, okay? Which just for context would mean that if we've done the 2,250 calories, we've minus the 250 to get to the original 2,000 calorie target. We've minus 300 again, to get to the 1,700 calorie day, and then we've minus the 250 again, we're gonna get 1,450 calories per day, okay? Which is not a lot of calories if you're used to having 2,000 calories a day, but this is not a long-term solution for navigating these weekends. These weekends should ideally not be coming up every single weekend in your diet plan. If they are, I would question whether or not this is an appropriate time for you to be pursuing this type of physique change, all right? Dieting is not easy. Losing weight is not easy. If it were, everyone would be walking around in amazing shape. So with the understanding that this challenge that you're embarking on is difficult, the result is worth it, what you're doing may need to change if you keep coming up against these problems in the week. If every single weekend you're turning to your coach and you're saying, how do I navigate this thing that I've got with my friends? It might be time to just reflect on that and uh, try and find opportunities for you to socialize that don't rely on slightly spiking or even massively spiking your calorie intake, okay? But in short, that is how I would navigate weekends and those are the options that I run through every time I have an event coming up. I hope that helps.